In 2016, you said that. I'm going to surround myself with only the best and most serious people. Well, I did do that. This and we time, had your Vice President Mike Pence is running against you. Yeah. Your Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, she's running against you. Your former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, said he's not supporting you. You mentioned National Security Advisor John Bolton. He's not supporting you either. You mentioned Attorney General Bill Barr. Uh, says you shouldn't be president again. Uh, calls you the consummate narcissist and troubled man. You recently called and uh, Barr a, a gutless pig. Uh, your second defense secretary is not supporting you. Called you irresponsible. This week you and your White House called your White House Chief of Staff John Kelly weak and ineffective and born with a very small brain. You called your acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney a born loser. You called your first Secretary of State Rex Tillerson dumb as a rock and your first Defense Secretary James Mattis the world's most overrated general. You called your White House Press Secretary Kayla Kennedy milquetoast and multiple times you've referred to your Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao as Mitch McConnell's China loving wife. So... Why did you hire all of them in the first place? <laughs> Brett Bayer had all the receipts as to why Trump is a fake friend. <laughs> but he really did push back a lot in this interview. It was surprising. Unlike Sean Hannity, he wasn't throwing him any softball questions. Uh, and things got really heated, as you would expect, after uh, Brett Bayer listed all of the insults Trump has hurled at people who he used to support. Uh, but it got particularly heated when Brett Bayer told Trump that he did not win the 2020 election. First of all, I won in 2020 by a lot, okay? You Let's get that, that straight. I won in 2020. You know that this, And if you look at all that's of not, the, the election. You lost the 2020 election. Uh, Brett. There was not significant Brett, widespread We're trying fraud. to get recounts, real recounts, not just numbers of votes Widespread cast. corruption, there was not a sense of that. There were lawsuits, more than 50 of them, by your lawyers, some in front of Brett, judges, judges that you appointed. Look at Wisconsin. That came out with Wisconsin no evidence. Is, Brett, Wisconsin has practically admitted it was rigged. Other states are doing the same right now, and it's continuing. on. It was a of every election. potential case of voter fraud in six battleground states, and they found fewer than 475 cases. You know why? Because they didn't effective. look at the right things. Okay, are you going they to be, go, this is how you're going to. First, I want to say that Trump has entered a new era of gross. I've never seen him look that bad on camera, and that's Donald Trump, who is notorious for looking bad on camera. So not everything going great in his personal life. But he really does uh, shoot himself in the foot when Bayer asks why he didn't just hand over all the classified documents to the National Archives. So let's watch. The only way NARA could ever get this stuff, this back, would be please, 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 could we have it back? And they please, asked for that. Because they have no, we they were did talking. Ask for it. No, and, and they said, can you give some, the documents back? And we were talking. And then they said they went to DOJ to subpoena you to get them Which back. they've never done before. Right. And in but why fairness, not just hand them over then? Because I had boxes. I want to go through the boxes and get all my personal things out. I don't want to hand that over to Nara yet. And I was very busy, as you've sort of seen. Yeah, but I've according very, to the indictment, busy. you then tell this aide to move to other locations after telling your lawyers to say you'd fully complied with the subpoena when you hadn't. But before I send boxes over, I have to take all of my things out. These boxes were interspersed with all sorts of things. I had to get all my things out of the boxes, like my emotional support, tactical invasion plans for Iran. <laughs> it's just so rich. Uh, but he obviously, as you can tell from those past couple clips, was antagonistic to Bear's hardball inquiries. And most of the uh, interview just ended up becoming him spewing insults, like when he started saying that Fox News's viewership is down. Continuation. More independent voters watch Fox News than any other TV source. A lot less than used to watch it. They do watch. Those voters a usually, lot less spread. They usually make up. <laughs> I'm sorry, Wes, this is so good. He's just like a really angry child. Actually, no, there's not that not that many viewers. Not anymore. <laughs> but a lot less. Right. <laughs> a lot less. Um, you know, man, this is just more evidence um, for anybody who wants to understand what's going on. There's just more evidence that Fox as an organization is trying to get off of the Trump train. They want to get off 
at the first available stop and they're doing their best to sort of grease the skids in that way, right? Like they they want to get off of Trump and it's not because he has bad policies, he's irresponsible, he's unlikable, he's erratic. Well, no, that's it. It, it is cuz he's erratic that he can't be counted upon. He's not predictable. Um he's not a great partner in that way. Like you want to know that the people that you're partnering with to transfer our nation's wealth to the people who are already richest people in the world. Um, if you want to uh, make sure that you gut Social Security and Medicare, uh, you want to deregulate every single industry to nothing. Uh, you need a, a decently reliable partner within those endeavors. And Trump has just proven since he got off the damn escalator stairs in 2015 that he's not reliable. And Fox and the powers that be are like, bro, we need, we need another horse, man. This guy is, he's kicking us off every single time. We can't ride this guy. <laughs> right, and I joked at the top of the story that Trump is a fake friend, but honest to God, he's a fake no, friend. And that's not the person that you know Fox News is ever gonna be able to have in their pocket. He is a wild card, he is, a, honestly, a petty bitch. That is a man mm. <laughs> who will stab you not in the back, but in the chest if you just look at him wrong. You know, uh, and anytime, and I'm sure this interview has just sealed that for for his relationship with Fox. But yeah, it really does seem like they're more squarely in the DeSantis camp after this. You know, as although I wouldn't describe him as you know a, a rational actor or a sane individual. I think that DeSantis has shown is anything but that. But he is, you know, he's the person who's going to deregulate. Like you said, this is the person that's going to give the kickbacks to um, their their backers to their advertisers. So that's that's the person that they would want in their pocket. And folks need to remember that before the, the the sort of momentum had built to a crescendo behind Trump's campaign, and he ultimately demolished all of the comers within the GOP primary, uh, they backed Jeb with the with the exclamation point. They backed <laughs> Ted Cruz. They thought Marco Rubio was you know he was young and exciting, and he was a nice Latin lover, and you know they were excited about all of those prospects, and everything failed, crashed, and. Burned. And ultimately, they closed ranks and was like, come on, we're not going to support Hillary freaking Clinton. Obviously, Donald Trump's a joke, but they just weren't going to do that. But they did support his competitors before he vanquished them. So this is just a repeat of that exact same process. Right, and he did definitely vanquish them. I mean, Jeb, <laughs> please clap Bush, was not well positioned <laughs> to, to be in a debate against Donald Trump. 